friends, I'm Katrina. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to create a custom WordPress website using the beautiful Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme by Studio Press. At the time of this recording, Parallax Pro is one of the most popular WordPress website themes within the Genesis collection. And it's not a surprise because this theme is absolutely gorgeous. Parallax Pro was designed to tell a story vertically down the page and guide your visitor to your call to action. So let's take a quick tour of the website we'll be creating in this video. So here on the home page of the website we'll be creating in this video using the Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme. At the top you'll have your website title or your logo as well as your menu navigation items and then we'll start with featured section number one which includes a background image, a description or title, and a call to action. Note that I've completely customized this website so I'll show you how to customize yours as well. Here I've added a box behind the title so that we can more easily read the words on top of the background image. Scrolling down after featured section number one, we'll have featured section number two, where you can continue to tell the story about your products or services. Then we'll have featured section number three, which again includes a background image, more about the story of your products and services. And then finally, here we'll have our main call to action, which in this particular demo will be a pricing table showcasing the various offers that I'm offering on my website. So we have three different packages here. So I'll show you in this video as well how to create this pricing table. Then scrolling down we'll have our final featured section, section number five, where you can also include either a featured image as I've done here or an image with words or some other call to action on top of the image. Then we'll have the bottom of the website. Here I'm going to add a connect on the web so anyone can easily connect with me on the social web to one of these different social networks. And then we'll have our footer which will once again include the menu navigation items as well as the footer credits and in this video we will customize the footer credits. So this is what the home page looks like of Parallax Pro. If you want to use images to tell the story of your products and services, this is an excellent and beautiful theme to use. So let's take a look at some of the inside pages of this website, starting with the blog archive page. So when I click on blog, then we'll arrive on the blog archive page, and here you'll see all the various blog posts on your website being displayed one vertically after the other, just like so. Note that there's no sidebars on this particular blog archive page. I've removed them. However, if you would like to add either a right sidebar or a left sidebar, you can do so, and I'll show you in this video how to do that. Taking a look at one of the inside blog single post pages, when I click on that description right here, now we'll arrive on the single blog post, which will feature the description, the published date, the author, and the comment section, along with the actual blog post. At the bottom of the blog post, we'll be adding an email opt-in form, so you can start collecting email leads directly from within your website, and we'll also add some social sharing icons so that your content can be shared easily throughout the social web. At the bottom, you'll have your comment box right here so anyone can leave a comment about your blog post and then we'll have our footer section. So the other page that we're going to be adding to this website is a landing page so when I click on free recipes at the top I'm going to be creating a demo landing page that features an offer to get five recipes in exchange for signing up for my email list. So note that with a landing page there's no website title, there's no menu navigation items, there's no left hand or right hand sidebars, and there's no footer. So with the landing page, the main purpose of this page is to really hone in and draw attention to your offer, whatever it is that you may be wanting to offer. In this case, once again, it's my recipes, and I've had in the post, I'll have the three reasons you should sign up, reason one, two, and three. And then here is my email list, so anyone can just sign up by adding their name, and then they'll get sent my recipes. So that is what the landing page will look like in the Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme. So the other page we're going to be adding is a contact page. It's always a great idea to have a contact page so that anyone can easily contact you from within your website. So I'll be showing you how to set up this contact page so that anyone can just leave their name, their email, their message and a subject and then they can simply press send and the message will be sent directly to you from within your website. We're also going to be adding a sidebar here so I will just show you how to add the content as well within the sidebar. Here I'm going to add some social network icons as well as a search box so anyone can easily search for content throughout my website. 
Okay, so this is where we're headed toward in this video. The other thing to mention about the Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme is that it's fully responsive, which means it will look amazing both on mobile devices as well as laptops and desktops. So as a quick demo of the responsiveness of this particular theme, this design, when I come to the bottom right-hand corner and I reduce the screen size, note that all the different elements on the page are resizing and stacking on top of one another one by one so that we can still very easily view all the content on the website in this smaller screen size. Note that the menu item has changed, it's now these three lines, so when I click on them then all the menu navigation items pop up or pop down and then all the other content or elements on the page have stacked really nicely one on top of the other including the pricing table everything is really easy to see so that's what is referred to as a responsive website it's mobile friendly and it will look as beautiful on mobile devices like tablets and smartphones as it does on desktops and laptops so this is where we're headed toward in this video. We're going to be completely customizing the Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme and setting it up. So let's get started. So before we get started, how much is this website going to cost? Well, we need several things. Number one, we need a domain name and we also need web hosting. In this video, I'm going to be using HostGator.com and at HostGator, you can get both the domain name as well as the web hosting. I'm also going to be using a special coupon code at HostGator.com to get an extra amount off my order. There's two coupons to choose from depending on which web hosting plan is preferred. So if you decide to go with HostGator.com, feel free to use these coupons as well to get an extra amount off of your order as well. If you sign up for one month hosting at HostGator.com, the best coupon to use is WP Coupon 25. And if you sign up for six months or more of web hosting at HostGator.com, the best coupon code to use is thank you. So be sure to refer to these coupons if you'd like to get an extra discount when you sign up at HostGator.com. Also, I do want to note, I do receive a small referral from HostGator if you decide to use these coupons and if you go with them. So thank you in advance for your support and helping me to continue to create these free WordPress training videos. I've also noted additional web hosts and deals on my website at 77webstudio.com forward slash deals. Once we have the domain name and the web hosting, the next thing we'll need is a Genesis framework and the child theme, both of which we can get at studiopress.com for $99.95. So this is a little bit more than many of the other premium WordPress themes out there in the online marketplaces, but keep in mind that this is a package that we're getting, which includes both the theme as well as the Genesis framework. This is a one-time purchase fee, and it also includes unlimited updates and unlimited support. Once we have the domain name, web hosting, and the framework and the theme, the next thing that we'll need to put this together is some time, and I'm estimating this should take roughly just under three hours. So please set aside about three hours or just under to go through the video, watch the tutorial, and put together the website. So in sum, the total to get started with this particular website is around $125. Again, that's using coupon codes WPCoupon25 when you sign up for one month hosting at HostGator or using coupon code thank you when you sign up for six plus months or more of web hosting at HostGator.com. Considering that we're going to be creating a completely customized professional WordPress website using the Genesis framework, this price of $125 to get started is a really amazing value. So what are the steps we need to take to create this WordPress website? Well, the first step is we need to get a domain and the web hosting. The second step is we need to install WordPress. And number three, we need to build out the website. So let's take care of step number one, getting a domain name and the web hosting by heading over to HostGator.com. Here on HostGator.com to view the web hosting plans, go ahead and click on the button in the middle that says View Web Hosting Plans, and then you'll see there's three different web plans to choose from. We have the Hatchling Plan, the Baby Plan, and the Business Plan. If you're just getting your website up and running, or if you have a small business website, then most likely the Hatchling Plan or the Baby Plan will be a good fit for you. The difference between these two is that with the Hatchling Plan, you can host one single domain name, whereas with the Baby Plan, you can host as many website domains as you would like. 
So there's definitely more of a value when you're looking at the baby plan. So go ahead and choose the one that is best for you. I'm going to choose the baby plan. So I'm just going to click on order now for the baby plan. And then we see that the next step is we need to enter our domain. So if you already have a domain name, go ahead and click on this button here to let them know that you already have your domain name. I'm actually going to register a brand new domain. So I'm just going to enter my domain name here. So just to see if something is available, I'm going to put a random name there. And of course it is available because it's super random. Once you have your domain name added and once you can see the message here that it is available, then go ahead and scroll down. And the next step is we need to choose the package type. When you come to this section, the default package type that HostGator will display is 20% off with a 36 month cycle. So if you're just getting your WordPress website up and running, I usually prefer to just go month to month. So in that case, I would change this cycle here to be one month at 20% off. Now I do have a coupon to get more off the order if you're signing up for one month. If you're signing up for six months, 12 months, 24 months, or 36 months, I have a different coupon to use that gives you more of a discount than what the standard dif discount is that HostGator is providing. So to see how that works out, I'm going to start with the first coupon code, which is WP coupon 25. And when we sign up, for example, of one month, then when you scroll down here, you'll note that there's a coupon code here that HostGator provides. And this is the standard coupon code, which we can see here will give you a total of $65. Now, if you put in the coupon code WP coupon 25 in this instance, and then click on validate, Note that now the coupon is now $57, so that's less than the standard coupon. Now there's a lot of different add-ons that HostGator provides here, including site lock and site backup and domain privacy. And most of these I usually do not use because I have other plugins that I use to do the same things and that way I don't have to pay an ongoing charge. So I am going to actually uncheck these two. If you'd like to sign up for these, by all means, continue to keep those checked. And the other thing I just want to show you for pricing, I'm going to remove this privacy just for the moment to show you how this works out. So now when I scroll down using a one month web hosting plan and the coupon code WP coupon 25, the total is less than $15, which is really, really great. Now, if you are signing up for more than one month, if you want to sign up for a billing cycle of say six months, 12 months, 24 or 36 months, I'll go with say six months right here, then the coupon code to use is thank you. So note that now when I use coupon WP coupon 25, the total is $62 for six months. But when I type in the coupon code thank you and then click on validate, now the price drops to $56. So the best coupon to use if you're signing up for six months or more is thank you. This is an exclusive 30% off coupon that HostGator has given me generously to share with all of my viewers. So thanks so much HostGator for providing me with this exclusive coupon. Okay, once you have your order, I'm actually going to go back up here and I'm actually going to add in just one month right now, one month, I'm going to sign up for one month right here. And instead of using the coupon code, thank you, I'll just go back to my other coupon, WP coupon 25, and I will click on validate. And now we see that my order total is less than $15. Now keep in mind that one of the things I did turn off is privacy protection. I actually do re recommend using the privacy protection or signing up for this. And here's why. When you do not sign up for privacy protection, then by default, all of your information like your email address, your address, and your website domain, and sometimes your phone number will be included in the public online database related to domain names. So if you prefer to keep all of that kind of personal contact info private, then the privacy protection is what you'll need to sign up for. So I do think this is a really good thing to sign up for. So in this case, I'm gonna sign up for this one add-on of privacy protection. So once I've clicked on that box and signed up for that, now when I scroll down, my order total will recalculate and it's less than $25. Again, that's using coupon code WP coupon 25. And also, also, a reminder, if you do sign up for more than six months, six months of web hosting or more, then go ahead and use the coupon code THANK YOU and you will get the best deal 
for between these two coupons. Okay, so once you have the coupon code that you need there, go up to the top. We also need to create a username and a security pin and fill out our billing info. And when you have all that filled out, then come to the bottom here and click on create an account to create your account and sign up for web hosting. So once you click on create your account, you'll get this page, which will thank you for your order and will tell you to go check your email for information related to logging into your web hosting account. So I'm going to go check out my email. And here we see on my email account, here's the email from HostGator with my account info. So I'm going to click this email to open it. And I want to point out two things. Number one, the first link that they'll share with you in the email is the billing system link. So if you want to check out any info related to your billing, you can go ahead and click on this link and use the password that they give you. And then right below that, you'll see that there's a link for your control panel with your username and a temporary password. So I'm going to copy this password here, the temporary password, and to log into your control panel, you'll use this link. So this is a really good email to keep in a safe place for future reference because you will be needing this information as well as the link to the control panel to log into your HostGator web hosting account. So I'm going to click on this link here. And then here is my username. You want to type in your username here that was found in the email and then you want to add your password right here as well. Once you have that set up you want to click on login to log into the control panel of your web hosting account. So here we are on the HostGator control panel. The next step that we want to do is step number two. We want to install WordPress and thankfully with HostGator there's a really easy way to install WordPress using their simple wizard script. So I am going to scroll down to where that is located. You want to scroll down to where it says software and services and you want to find this icon that says quick install. So this is what we're going to use to install WordPress really easily in HostGator. We're going to use this quick install link so I'm going to click on that and once I click on that you'll note that there's all these different kinds of software listed here on the left hand sidebar. So right at the top you'll note that it says blog software and there's a link here for WordPress. This is what we want to install so I'm going to click on that. Then we'll arrive on this page and we can see at the time of this recording the most recent version of WordPress is version 3.9.1. So I'm going to click on continue to continue installing WordPress and here you'll get a panel where you can decide which domain to install WordPress to. So I'm going to add the domain name where I want to install WordPress and then I'm going to fill out this information below starting with the admin email. So I'm going to add my admin email right there. Next, you want to give your new website a title, so I'll just call this the name of my domain. And then also you want to add an admin username. Now note that this is an important step for website security. You want to make sure that you do not use an admin that is something like admin, support, or administration. These three names, admin, support, and administration, those are the first names that hackers will try when they're attempting to break into your WordPress website. So it's important that you use an admin username that is more unique than admin. So for this instance, I'm just going to add my name right here. You can also add your first name and last name. I'm going to leave that empty and instead I'm just going to click on install to install WordPress. Okay, congratulations, your installation is ready. So you can access the installation of your new website by clicking on this link here. And also note that here is the admin area login URL that you'll use in the future to access the login panel to access your website in the future. You wanna make a note of this link here. It's usually your domain name followed by wp-admin. So that's an important link to remember as well so that going forward you can easily log into your WordPress website. Also make a note of your username and password. This is what you will also need of course to log into your website when you click on this link. So I'm just going to highlight this temporary password here and copy it. 
And then I'm going to click on this link here to log into my new WordPress website. So here we are on the login screen of our WordPress website. To log in, you want to enter your username in the username field and your password in the password field. And then you want to click on this button that says Remember Me so that the next time you come to WordPress, your username and password will be remembered. In the event that you forget your password in the future, or perhaps even now, you want to click on this link here that says lost your password, and WordPress will send you a password reset to the email that you used when you were creating your WordPress website. So for the moment, here I have my username and password. I'm going to go ahead and click on the login button to log in to the WordPress website. So here we're on the dashboard. This is the first thing you'll see when you log in to your WordPress website. And at the top, you'll see this welcome message that says, welcome to WordPress with a number of links that most people check out when they first install WordPress. I'm gonna go over each of these steps later on in the video, so I'm not going to cover these right now. We'll go over these a little bit later. For the moment, I'm just going to close this box altogether by coming up to the right hand side and clicking on dismiss. When I do that, it is removed. Now we can see the other sections that are included in the dashboard, including the at a glance, where you can see how many posts, comments, and pages you've added to your site so far, as well as the current version of WordPress that's running on the website, which at the time of this recording is WordPress 3.9.1. Also note that we're using the 2014 theme. This is the theme that comes with your WordPress installation right out of the box. We'll be changing that in just a moment. On the right hand side you have your WordPress news if you want to check that out and then if you want to create a quick draft that's over here as well. Scrolling down we can see any recent activity on the site right down here below. So if you'd like to rearrange any of these boxes you can do so by simply dragging them to the left or to the right and just simply moving them around and then if you want to remove them all together you can go up to screen options click on screen options and then when you turn off these or uncheck these you'll see that they start to disappear. So I'm going to leave them all checked so that we can see all of them. Once again, here is the welcome message that we just dismissed. When I click on that once again, then it brings back this welcome message. Okay, so that is how you can configure your dashboard in WordPress. So let's take a quick look at what the website looks like right now, right when we install WordPress, once again using the 2014 theme. So to check out the website, I'm going to come up to the top left-hand side, left-hand corner, hover over the website name, and click on Visit Site. Here we can see the website on the front end, and we can see we've got quite a bit of work to do. This is really bare bones right now. This is the 2014 theme that comes with WordPress. WordPress 3.9.1. So where we're headed, of course, is we're going to be using the Genesis Parallax Pro child theme. It's a Genesis framework by Studio Press. And when we're done with this video, our website is going to look like this. So we can see we've got quite a bit of work to do. So this is where we're headed toward in this video. We're going to have our welcome bar at the top with an email opt-in form and all these other customizations to this website. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme. So to do that, I'm going to go back to the dashboard and click on Dashboard. Then I'm going to go down to Appearance, hover over Appearance, and click on Themes. Here we can see the active theme at the moment, as mentioned, is the 2014 theme. There's these other themes that come with the WordPress installation. We're not going to be using these themes. Instead, I'm going to be adding a new theme, which you can do by either clicking on this button here at the top that says Add New, or you can scroll down and you can click on this plus button right here to add a new theme. So I'll just click on this plus right here to add a new theme. Here on the Add Theme screen, we can see a number of other WordPress themes that we can add to our WordPress website. These are all themes that are available within the WordPress theme directory. So you can check them out here or you can click on these links here, Featured, Popular, or Latest, to check out the latest, popular, or the featured themes at WordPress. Of course, we're going to be adding the Parallax Pro Genesis Child theme, so to do that I need to upload a theme. So I'm going to click on Upload Theme right here, then we need to choose the file for this particular theme. So assuming that you've already bought the theme 
theme at Studio Press. I'm going to head on over to studiopress.com and here I'm going to log into my account. Once you're logged into your Studio Press account, then you can download the Parallax Pro Child theme by clicking on Downloads. So once I click on Downloads, then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the Parallax Pro theme. Here's the Parallax Pro theme right here. We have the theme set up as well as the download link. So I'm going to click on this blue button to download all the files for the Parallax Pro Child theme. Once the Parallax Pro Child theme has been downloaded, the next step is we need to also download the Genesis Framework, the Genesis Parent theme. So scrolling up one more time, you should see this as well. It'll say Genesis Framework, the theme setup, as well as the download button. And as we did in the previous example, we need to download the Genesis Framework as well. So I'm going to click on this blue button to download all of the files for the Genesis Framework. Once the files for the Genesis Framework as well as the Parallax Pro Child theme have been downloaded, then we can install them into our WordPress website. So back on my website here, I just need to choose the file, but note that here at the top it says if you have a theme in .zip format, you may install it by uploading it here. So we need to convert the current files that we have into a .zip format. So here over on the right hand side, I have my desktop and we can see I have the folders for the Genesis Framework and the Parallax Pro theme. These are both folders though. They have not yet been turned into a .zip file. So I'm just going to compress them on my Mac by holding down the control key and then clicking on this actual icon right here. And then I get this drop down list right here. I'm going to click on this one that says compress Genesis to turn this into a .zip format. If you're on a PC, then I believe it's right click and then convert into a .zip format, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing for the Parallax Pro theme right here. Once again on my Mac, I'm going to hold down the control key, click on the icon, and then click on compress to turn that as well into a zip format. So now I've got both of these in the .zip format, which is exactly what I need. So now I can install these into my WordPress website. So going back to my site, I'm going to click on choose file to choose the file. And the first one I'm going to install is the Genesis zip file right here, genesis.zip. So I'm going to highlight that and click on choose. Then I'm going to click on install now to install this new theme. Okay, once the theme has been successfully installed, we can activate it by clicking on the middle link right here that says activate. So now the current theme is the Genesis theme. The next thing is we need to add the Parallax Pro Child theme as well. So as we did in the previous step, I'm going to click on Add New. Then I'm going to click on Upload Theme. And then I'm going to choose the file. And this time I'm going to choose the Parallax Pro zip file right there. I'm going to click on that and click on Choose. Then I'm going to click on Install Now. And once the Parallax Pro Child theme has been installed, then I'm going to activate this one by clicking on Activate. Note that this needs the Genesis Framework in order to work, so you need to really have both of these side by side. And the Genesis Framework once again needs to be installed first, and then second you can install the Parallax Pro Child theme. So once these two themes have been installed, the next step is we need to install the plugins. So going over to the left hand side, I'm going to scroll down and click on plugins. And here we can see the existing plugins that have been added to our website, just a few of them. So the ones that we need to add include the Genesis eNews extended widget. This is the email opt-in form on the sidebar. So I'm going to click on add new. And I'm going to do a search for the Genesis eNews extended plugin and click on search. Here it is at the top. I'm going to click on install now. Are you sure you want to install this? Yes, okay. Once it has been installed, then we can activate it by clicking on activate plugin. The next plugin that I want to install is the simple social icons plugin. So once again, I'm going to click on add new. This time I'm going to do a search for the simple social icons. There it is right there. Then I'm just going to click on search once again. And here it is at the top, simple social icons. You can read more about it by clicking on details. Here we can see on the right hand side that it has been downloaded over 200,000 times. It has almost a five star rating and the last update was three weeks ago. So this is the one that we want. I'm going to click on install now to install this plugin. Then as we did in the previous step, once it has been installed, we can activate it by clicking on activate plugin. There's a couple more plugins that I want to add here. The next one is the contact form. So I'm going to click on plus add new. Then I'm going to add the contact form seven. That's the one I'm looking for, contact form seven. 
there's spaces in between each of those. Then I'm going to click on search plugins. Once I find it, once again, I'm going to click on install now. Are you sure you want to install this? Yes. Okay. And once the contact form seven has been installed, we can click on activate to activate the plugin. Next, I want to install the Genesis simple edits plugin. So I'm going to click on add new at the top for plugins. Then in the box, I'm going to put Genesis simple edits and click on search for plugins. Here it is at the top as well, Genesis simple edits. So I'm going to click on install now. Yes. Okay. And once it has been installed, then I'm going to activate this one by clicking on activate plugin. Once the plugin has been activated, we have two more plugins to add to our WordPress website. The next one is the magic action box. This will give us an easy way to add an email opt-in form to the bottom of our blog post. So here at the top, I'm going to click on add new. Then I'm going to do a search for the magic action box. I'm going to add it in the search field and then I'm going to click on search plugins to search for this plugin. Here at the top, we see it right here. I'm going to click on install now and then OK to install this plugin. Once the plugin has been successfully installed, just as we did previously, I'm going to click on activate plugin to activate this plugin. And last but not least, the other plugin that I want to add to the website is an image optimizer plugin. This will help to reduce the size of all of our images we're adding to our website, which is always a great thing. So I'm going to click on add new. And the one that I'm going to be using is called EWWW image optimizer. Ooh, image optimizer right there. I'm going to add that in. Then I'm going to click on search plugins. Here it is at the top. We can check it out by clicking on details. And here we can see it's been downloaded over 200,000 times. It was just updated six days ago and it has a five star rating based on 100 ratings, which is amazing. Now it does say this plugin has not been tested with our current version of WordPress. It's compatible up to version 3.9.0, but WordPress just came out with 3.9.1. And I've already tested this on another demo site. So I know this is good to go. Also, we can see it was last updated six days ago. Okay, so I'm just going to click on install now to install this plugin. And once it has been successfully installed, then I'm going to click on activate to activate the plugin. Okay, so once all the plugins have been activated, we'll come back to each of these plugins later on in the video when we cover each of the sections related to these plugins. For now, let's take a quick look at the home page of our website using the Genesis Parallax Pro child theme. So going up to the website name in the top left left hand corner right here. I'm going to click on visit site and here we can see the home page using the Genesis Parallax Pro child theme. So taking a quick look at our finished website over here we can see we've got quite a bit of work to do. Here is the finished site where we're headed toward and we can see at the top we have these menu items right here. So let's begin by adding some different pages to our website including the blog page, some blog posts and some other pages and once those pages have been created then we can add them to the menu now navigation area here in the top right hand toolbar. So starting with the blog posts, I'm going to go back to the website over here. I'm going to click on dashboard. Then I'm going to scroll down, hover over post and click on add new. You can also create a new blog post by going up to the top toolbar, hovering over plus new and clicking on post. So WordPress gives us a number of different ways to do the same exact thing. So here on posts, once again, I'm hovering over posts, then I'm going to click on add new. And here we are on the add new post page. So here we can start by giving our new blog post a title. So I'm going to add in a title right there. Then we see that we have this box down below and just like an email or some kind of word processing document, you want to add in your content here and you can use these icons right here to format your text. Now note that there's two different tabs. There's a visual tab and a text tab. The text tab is the behind the scenes code that WordPress is generating to format your content. And the visual tab is the what you see is what you get mode where you don't need to know any code. So whenever I'm working within posts, I prefer to keep the visual tab displayed right here so I can just take advantage of all these icons. And the great thing about these icons is that you don't have to memorize exactly what they do. You can just hover on top of them and then you'll know that there's this tool tip here that tells you exactly what each one of these icons will do. 
Okay, so let's add some content into this post right here. I've actually copied some content from the demo site and I'm just going to paste it in right here. But instead of pasting the content directly into this white box, in order to remove all the formatting, I'm going to paste it directly by pasting it into the text view right here. Sometimes when you paste content from another site, either a Word document, an email, or something like that, and you paste it into your WordPress site, it will come with a lot of unwanted code. So I just want the content itself. So I'm just going to click on the text tab right here, paste in that content, and then I can go back to the visual tab by clicking on visual. And here we can see here is the actual content. And when I highlight it, then if I want to bold it, I would just click on the B for bold, and we can see it bolds or the italic and then it's bolded and italicized and we can see now when I go to the text view when I click on that here is the behind the scenes HTML that WordPress just generated to create both the bold and the italic formatting so we have the opening tags right here and then we have the closing tags for both of those formatting styles right there so going back to the visual vo visual mode uh, view, I'll just leave that as it is. On the right hand side, we can see there are categories. So if you'd like to add this to a category, you can do so. I'm going to add a new category by clicking on add new category. I'm going to call this blog. Then once I've added my new category there, I'm going to click on this button one more time to actually create the category. Once the categories have been set, then we can scroll down and we can see there's some tags that we can add to our post as well. So if you'd like to add some tags, you can just add them right here. And you want to make sure that if you add multiple tags, you want to separate them with a comma. So I'll just add carrot because this is a post about carrot and ginger and recipe. So I'll just add these three tags separated by a comma and then I'll click on add. Then you'll see them down below right here. Now going back to the post, I actually want to add an image within this blog post. So I'm going to place the cursor where I want the image to be displayed, which is right here before the post begins. So I'll put the cursor right there. Then to add an image to your your blog post you want to come up to the top click on add media you can either add an image directly from your media library or you can upload a file now we haven't added any images yet so there's nothing or shouldn't be anything in our media library there we go there's nothing there so I'm just gonna click on upload file and then select file then I'm gonna choose the image that I want it's in this folder right here and let's see carrot ginger there it is right there I'm just gonna highlight it and click on choose to upload this image once the image has been uploaded, you'll get these attachment details on the right hand side. You can see the size and the title, caption, alternative text, and a description. These are all optional. However, I do recommend that you always include a title and an alternative text, both for SEO purposes to help your images get found by the Google and also to help anyone who's visually impaired who may be using text-to-speech software to understand what this image is about. So for those two reasons, I recommend always adding a title and an alternative text. Once you've added the title and alternative text, I can scroll down and you can decide whether you want to align this on the left, the center, or the right, or have no alignment whatsoever. I want to align this on the left, so I'm gonna click on left alignment. If you want this image to actually lead to something, either to a media file attachment page or a custom URL, you can do so. I'm just going to click on none. I don't want to link this to anything. And then you can choose the size that you would like for your image within your blog post. So you have the thumbnail size, the medium size, or the full size. I'm going to click on full size right here. And then I'm going to click on insert into post to insert my image into the post. Now this might be a little bit too large. We'll check it out in just a moment. We may have to modify the size of this. But for the moment, I'll just leave it as it is. Then you want to scroll down and let's see what else. So if you'd like to add any theme SEO settings, which I always recommend, that's always a good thing, you can do so right here. Genesis comes built in with theme SEO settings. If you're using a plugin like the WordPress SEO by Yoast, then you wouldn't need to fill this out. So it's up to you. It depends on what kind of SEO plugin you are using. Scrolling down underneath the SEO settings, the next options that we can choose are the layout settings. So if you want to keep this as the default layout set in the theme setting, 
settings, you can just leave this radio button checked right here. If you want the sidebar to be either on the right or the left or have no sidebar at all, you can choose the layout settings right here. I'm gonna choose this one for the moment. We'll see what that looks like with no sidebar. Then I'm gonna scroll down and we need to set up our magic action box. This is the email opt-in form that will be displayed below your blog post. And we'll come back to this in a moment because we haven't yet set that up. Next, I'm just gonna come up to the top and I'm gonna click on publish to publish this blog post. Okay, once the post has been published, we can view it by clicking on view post, but I do notice right here down below the permalink is set as P equals nine, which is not a really helpful permalink and it's certainly not a good permalink for SEO. So it's always a good idea to change that when you're setting up your WordPress website for SEO purposes to give a permalink that is more user friendly and more SEO friendly. So you can change the permalinks by clicking on this button here that says change permalinks or you can do so by scrolling down, hovering over settings, and then clicking on permalinks. So I'm just gonna click on change permalinks right here, which will bring us to the permalinks page. And here we can see the default is set to this P equals one, two, three number. So this is just going to have a URL structure with this number, which really doesn't help people know what your blog post is about. And it also doesn't really help Google or search engines know what your post is about either. So you can choose the other options down below. I prefer using the post name, just simply the post name. Sometimes people may want to use the month and name or the day and the name. The main thing is that you wanna make sure that you're not using just a number. So I'm gonna go with the post name right here. So just we'll have my URL and the post name. And then I'm gonna scroll down and click on save changes to save my permalink settings. Now when we go back to the post by clicking on posts right here, then here is my post that I created. And when I click on edit, now we can go to the permalink and we can see it actually has some words here with my keywords, which is a really important thing for SEO. So let's check this post out. I'm gonna click on view post right here and this will bring us to the actual blog post page and we can see this is what my post looks like. I had mentioned earlier that I wasn't sure about the size of this image, but I actually like the size, so I'm gonna leave it as it is. Then scrolling down, we can see we need to add our email opt-in form and some social sharing features. We'll do that in a little bit, but otherwise it looks good. If you wanted to create a sidebar, either a right sidebar or a left sidebar, you would do that in the edit layout settings. When you go back to the edit post, you can change your layout settings by coming down below and choosing which say setting you want for your layout. I'm gonna keep it with no sidebars. So that's just how I'm gonna keep it right now. Now what we need to do is we need to actually create a blog archive page that we can add to our menu navigation area. So jumping over to the finish site over here, we see that here we have the, all the different pages in the menu navigation area. So the next one that we need to create is the actual blog archive page, which will display all of your blog posts on the same page. This is actually, this one right here is simply the single blog post right here. Okay, so going back to our website, I'm going to actually create a page this time. You can go to the left-hand sidebar, hover over pages and click on add new, or at the top, you can hover over plus new and click on page. So once again, many ways to do the same thing in WordPress. So I'm gonna click on plus new page, and here at the top, I'm gonna give this a title of blog because this will be the blog archive page. Then on the right-hand side, note that there are some page attributes. When you scroll down and you hover over the default template right here, you can see one of the template options within the Genesis Child theme is blog. So I'm gonna click on blog right there. That's pretty much all you need to do. You can scroll down. You can choose once again the layout settings that you'd like. I will just leave them as they are. And then you just come up to the top and you click on publish to publish the blog archive page. So now we can check this out by clicking on view page right here. I'm gonna click on that. And here we see the blog archive page. Right now we just have two posts. We've got this blog post that we just created and then we have the default post that came with our WordPress installation. So as you add more blog posts to your WordPress website, those will all be displayed right here on your blog archive page. 
So now let's go ahead and set up the contact page for the site. Going back to the dashboard, I'm going to click on dashboard. Then I'm going to create a new page by hovering over pages and clicking on add new. Here I'm just going to give this a page title of contact and then we need to add some short code right in here. So I'm just going to save this particular page as a draft right now by on the right hand side I'm going to click on save draft. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Now in order to find the code, the short code for the contact form, we need to click on plugins. Then we have the contact form 7 right here and we can see here is the settings for your contact form. This is an important piece in your website so anyone can easily contact you directly from within your website. So I'm going to click on settings. And here we see there is one contact form right here. When I click on edit, here we see the short code for this particular contact form and all the bases have been covered. Someone will have to fill in their name, their email address, a subject line, their message, and then there will be a send button. You also want to scroll down and you want to make sure that you set the email address where the contact message should be sent. This is really important because if you don't set this then it's going to go into a black abyss and you will never receive your messages. So make sure that you do add your email address in this box right here. Okay, so once you have your email address added, then just scrolling down, everything else looks good. I'll leave all the defaults set right there. Then I'm going to click on save to save this contact form. Next, I'm going to highlight the short code. We need this short code right here. I'm going to highlight it and copy it. Then going back to my pages by clicking on pages. Then here we see the draft, the contact form is in draft form. I'm going to click on edit to edit this draft. Then here on the right hand side, there's a text tab. I'm going to click on the text tab because we're adding code right now. And I'm just going to paste in the short code that I just copied in the previous step. Once that's all set, then we can just scroll down. Again, if you'd like to choose the layout settings, you can do so. I'm just going to leave it as it is. I think I'll put a right sidebar actually this time. I want there to be a right sidebar on the contact form so I can include some other things. And then I'm just going to scroll up to the top and click on publish to publish my new contact form. Once the page has been published, then we can check it out by clicking on view page. And here we have our contact form on the left hand side, the name, email address, subject, and then the message and then the send button right there. On the right hand side we have the widget area. We'll be going over this shortly, so stay tuned. And one other thing I want to mention with the contact form, I actually want to add a short blurb right above letting everyone know like to leave a note in the contact form. So you can do add any kind of like sentence or so that you'd like by just simply going up to the top, clicking on edit page, and then perhaps maybe you want to add a sentence that just says, please contact me via the form below. Once you've added your sentence, then you can click on update to update your page. So now when we go back to the page by clicking on view page, now we see we have our sentence and our form and we are good to go. So the other thing that I want to add is I want to add the menu items here in the top navigation bar. So to add some menu items here, I'm just going to go back to the website name at the top and note that when I hover over the website name there's this drop down box and we can go directly to the menus page by clicking on menus or if I click on dashboard then I can go to menus by hovering over appearance and clicking on menus. Once we click on menus then we'll arrive on the edit menu screen and here we can create our new menu. So I'm just going to give my new menu a name by adding that name in this field right here. Then I'm going to click on create menu to create the new menu. Once we create the new menu we'll have two additional sections that pop up down below and here we can start adding menu items to this particular section from the left hand side. So the two pages that I want to add are the contact page and the blog page so I'll just check those right there. Then I'm going to click on this button that's says add to menu to add these to the menu. In order to order these the way that you'd like, you can just drag them up or down and set them how you'd like right there. So I want the blog section, blog page to be first, followed by the contact page. The other thing that I want to add is I want to add a home link. So in order to create a link, here where it says links, you just want to click on this box to open that up. And then I'm just going to add my link right here. 
And then I'm gonna call this a link text of home. Once you have the URL added and the link text, you can just click on add to menu. And then we can drag this as well to the top. So now we have a home link, a blog link, and a contact page. We'll be adding more items to the menu later on in the video. For now, I'm just gonna click on save menu to save my menu. So once the menu has been created, the next step is we need to add the menu to the top header right section. So to do that, we want to go on the left hand side, go down to widgets, click on widgets. And here on the widgets page, we can see all the different widget areas for the website. So the place where we want to add the menu is in the header right widget area right here. So I'm just going to scroll down here on the left hand side, you'll see there's a custom menu widget and it says add a custom menu to your sidebar. So I'm just going to drag that up into the header right widget area and then we need to select the menu. So I'm just going to click on select, select the menu that we just created and click on save. Once that is set, let's check it out by going up to the top left hand corner, clicking on visit site, and now we see the menu items in the top header right section area. Now this is the home page and as we see right now, all of our different blog posts are being displayed. So where we are headed, of course, is we want to set up the home page so that we have this welcome message and also we have these various sections here, each with a background image. So let's take care of setting up the home page section of the website right now. So going back to our website, I'm going to click on dashboard. Then I'm going to go down to the widget section, appearance and then widgets. And then we'll see there's a number of different home section widgets that we can configure right here. There's five different home section widgets. So I'm just going to click on this. In each of these sections, I'm going to add a text, some text or HTML. So I'm just going to scroll down and grab the text widget. Here it says arbitrarily add text or HTML. So I'm going to grab that text widget and drop it into the home section one. I'll do that for each of these different sections so we have that ready to go. I'm just going to drag the text widget to each of these various sections. So I'll just scroll down and move it once again up to home section two. Then I'll do the same thing for home section three, four, and five. Okay, so once we've added the text widgets to each of the different home section areas, the next step is we need to fill out the content in the text widget. So starting with home section number one, I'm gonna give this a title. Then in the bottom section here, I'm going to give it a subtitle as well as a button. I'll be sure to include this code in the video so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Mostly here, I just have a sentence. We deliver the best of the farmer's market to you. And then there is a paragraph HTML opening tag right here and a closing tag at the end. And then we have the opening tag for the button HTML right here. So we have a class equals button in parentheses. And then we have the link URL, href equals quotation, and then I have my actual link, and then I have my actual word right here. So I'll be sure to leave the code in the video so you can see it a little bit better. Once you've added that in, you just wanna click on save to save this text. Then I'm gonna close this and move to section number two. As we did in the previous example, I'm going to start by giving this section number two widget a title and then I'll add some content here in this section. Then as we did in the previous example, I'm going to scroll down, click on save to save the settings, move on to section number three and do pretty much the same thing. For section number four, once I add the title, the next step is I want to add a pricing table with three columns that outline or showcase the three different offers that I have for my site. So I'm just going to drop the code, the HTML code for that pricing table here in the box. I'll be sure to add the code to the video so you can pause the video and check it out line by line. And you can edit this if you'd like to add a pricing table as well. Once I have all the code right there, I'm just going to scroll down and click on save to save the content and the settings. Finally, for home section number five, I'm not going to be adding a title or any content. I'm just going to leave this blank. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to save this. Having this blank text widget right here will at least allow the background image to be displayed. So if you have an additional third, I think, image that you want to have displayed, you need to have some kind of widget in this section in order to have the image displayed. If you don't want to add the image, then you can just remove the widget section here altogether by just dragging it across, and then you will not have an image being displayed. I'll show you what this looks like in just a moment, but 
Here for my settings, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to have a blank text placeholder right here and make sure that I click on save to save the placeholder. Once the five widgets on the home page section have been set, now we can check out the home page by going up to the top left hand corner and clicking on visit site. So now we see the default images that come with our Genesis Parallax Pro installation in the background, but we do see the widgets, the words at least, and the calls to action that we've added in appearance widgets. So we can see those one by one. The next step though is we need to replace these default images with our actual images that we want to use for our website. So let's set the background images on the home page now. To do that, I'm gonna go back to the dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm gonna scroll down to to appearance, hover over appearance, click on that, and then I see the drop down box here where it says customize. I'm going to click on customize. Here we can see a window pane of what our website looks like on the right hand side, and we can see all these different sections that we can customize for the website on the left hand side. So starting with the site title and the tagline, I'm going to open that up. I have my site title right here, my website name, but the tagline, just another WordPress website, that's not really a great tagline. That's a tagline that comes with every WordPress installation. So at minimum, I suggest at least deleting it altogether, if not adding a custom tagline in this box right here. I'm also going to just reduce the website from .com to simply my name, and then I'm going to click on Save and Publish to save those settings. Then I'm going to close the section and move on to background images. These are the images that we need to replace to replace all of the default images on the home page. So starting with featured section number one, that's this section right here, I'm just going to click on this image. Then I'm going to click on select a file and then choose the file. This is the one that I want, SFO1. I'm going to highlight that and click on choose. Once image four, section one has been uploaded, you'll see it on the right hand window pane right here. So that looks good so far. The next image we need to add is to featured section number three. So this is featured section number one. Then we have section two. And then here we have the image for featured section number three. So as we did in the previous example, I'm just going to click on this link on the left hand side. Then I'm going to select a file. I'm going to use F SFO2. Click on choose and that will upload the other image into featured section 3. Once the image for featured section 3 has been uploaded, then we can move on to section number 5 image. So I'm just going to scroll down. That would be this image right down here below. So I'm going to click on section 5 right here, this image on the left hand side. Click on select a file. Then I'm going to select the file and click on choose. And once again, WordPress will upload this image to section number five. Okay, so once we have all of the images added to our website for the home page, you want to make sure that you click on save and publish to save your settings. Then I'm going to click on close and we can go back to the website by going up to the top and clicking on visit site. And here we see the home page now of our website. So we've got the section number one image and then number three, and then we have number four. Website over here on the right hand side, we can see we have lots of customizations, but one of the things that I do wanna add here is a connect on the web with these various icons and links to each of my social networks so anyone can easily connect with me on the social web. So this is the footer widget section right here. So to add this to the website, I'm gonna go back to our dashboard, click on dashboard. And one of the kind of tricks that I use, if you can't remember what the HTML code is, remember that WordPress will generate the code for us. All we need to do is pretty much tell WordPress what we want to add. So I'm gonna create a demo post right now by just clicking on add new. As soon as this post is created, or I should say, as soon as I've gathered the code from the post, then I'm gonna delete it, because we really don't want this post. I just wanna find out really easily what the HTML code will be. So for example, starting with add media, I wanna add four different social icon images to the website. As we see here in the finished area, there's four different images, and then I want to add an HTML link to each one of these that goes to each of these networks. So to do that here on my little playground here, my sandbox, I'm going to click on add media, then upload files and select files. Then I'm gonna choose each one of these files right here. These are my four different social network icons. So I'm gonna upload these all at once. We can see that here they are on the left-hand side. WordPress is installing all of those. 
Then on the right hand side, it's always a good idea to give each of these new images a title and an alternative text so that for anyone who may be visually impaired, they can easily read or understand what this image is by using text to speech software. And of course, for search engines like Google, it's always helpful to have a title and alternative text as well. So I'm just going to add a title and alternative text for all of these. And once I've done that for each of these images, then scrolling down, we can see we have some alignment details here. I want to link each of these to the respective social network page. So here where it says link to, and I click on that, I can add either a media file, an attachment page, or a custom URL. I'm going to click on custom URL in this situation right here for this Twitter, and I'm going to add my own Twitter URL that goes directly to my Twitter page so anyone can connect with me there. Also for the size, I'm going to use the full size. So once you have your link to custom URL added right here and you've added in your title and alternative text and you've done that for each of these different items right here, when you're done, go ahead and click on insert into post to insert each of these images into the post. Okay, so once we click on insert into post, we can see that WordPress has added all of this code directly into the post. So this is a really easy way to quickly gather the HTML. You don't need to know any HTML this way, but it's always helpful, I think, to kind of look at it and see how it's structured. So if you'd like to check it out, you can kind of pause the video and see how this is set up. Right now, I'm just going to copy all of this code right here, highlight it and copy it. Then I'm going to go back to my widgets by hovering over appearance and clicking on widgets. Then I'm going to scroll down to my footer widget area right here, open that up. I'm going to add a text widget just as we did in the previous widget example. So I'm going to drag the text widget right here. And then I'm going to give this a title. connect on the web and then here in this box I'm just going to paste the code that I just copied in the previous step. This is all the HTML code for both the images and the links to the different social networks. Then I'm going to click on save to save these settings. Once that's saved I'm going to go check it out by going up to the top clicking on visit site. Then now when I scroll down let's see how it looks. So it's a little bit, it's not centered, so I definitely want to center it. So let's go back to our dashboard. I'm going to click on dashboard. And here on the dashboard, one more time, I'm going to go back to the widgets page by going to appearance and widgets. And we're going to check out the widgets in the footer section one more time. So I'm just going to scroll down, click on footer, and click on this text area. And here we see that in the image HTML, I have actually included a line left an align left class, which is causing all of those images to be aligned to the left hand side. So I just want to delete that. I just want this to get rid of the class altogether. And I just wanted to say image source. So let's see how that works right there. So here we have image and then source, and then there's a link right there. That looks good. We also have a tag and the width. So that looks good. Mostly I just want to remove this class align left code right there. So I'll do that for all of these four items. So I'll just remove that. Okay, so then I'm just going to click on save to save the new settings. Go back to my home page by clicking on visit site. And now hopefully when I go to the bottom, here we see all of these images are lined up in the center, which is exactly how they want them to be. Once everything in the footer section has been set up, now we can start the fun part, which is customizing our home page. Starting with here in section, the featured section number one, we see that I have the title right here. We deliver organic local groceries right to you. And we can see that these words are a little bit difficult to read because there's actually letters in the image right in the background. So in order to make this message along with the call to action and this other sentence right here more easy to read I want to create a box with some opacity so that we can see this title really clearly so where we're headed right now is we're going to be customizing everything on this home page including colors and backgrounds and boxes and things like that 
So where we're headed toward, once again, we're going to be creating this box with a little bit of opacity. We're going to make it orange. Then we're going to change the other sections to be an orange background with a white font. And then finally at the end, we'll change some of the other individual fonts right here in the pricing table and the button. So we're changing colors and we're going to create this box. So before creating any customizations to the Genesis Parallax Pro child theme, it's always a good idea to create a custom style sheet. So on my YouTube channel, I created another video called How to Safely Customize Your Genesis Child Theme. So I encourage you to check out this video right here and set up your custom style sheet. Once you've set up your custom style sheet, then you'll be ready to safely make these customizations that we're about to do right now. So I've already added a custom style sheet to my website. So I'm just gonna go back to my site right here. So here on the homepage, the first section that I'm going to be customizing is this section at the top, section number one, where we have this title right here. This title's a little bit hard to read on top of the image. So we're going to be adding a box with some opacity to kind of make this title stand out and make it a lot easier to read. So what we're going for is this box right here. It has a little bit of opacity, so you can still see a little bit of the image in the background, but for the most part, it's way easier to read with this orange background than with directly the image itself. So to add that box, we're going to be using the Google Chrome Inspect Elements Developer Tool. If you are using Google Chrome, a Google Chrome browser, then you can find that developer tool in the upper right hand corner. There are these three lines and when you click on those, it will open up a drop down box where when you hover over tools, you'll get one more box and then there's a section here called developer tools. So when you click on developer tools, it'll open up a window with two window panes. On the left hand side is all the HTML code that is creating the layout for the website. And on the right hand side, we have all the various styles, fonts, colors, font sizes, and things like that, that create the style and the appearance of the website. So we're going to be changing the CSS here on the right hand side. Keep in mind that anything we adjust here on the right hand side is simply a sandbox. It actually doesn't change anything on your website unless you actually go into the files and save the new customizations within the files. So I'll go over that in just a moment. The first thing is we need to find out what the code is that is generating or that is creating the title right here. So to find this section on the left hand side, I'm going to drill down one by one to find the area that is specifically encompassing the title right here. Here we have it right here, text-2. So this is the section that we need to customize, text-2. Now you may see something different. When you go through this process, you might find that it says text dash five or text dash six or text dash seven. So whatever the number is for your particular website, you wanna make sure that you note that number instead. Mine right here, as we see, says text dash two. So I'm gonna keep that in mind and I'm gonna make the customizations to text dash two. So keeping in mind text dash two, I'm just gonna close this right here and go back to my dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm gonna go down to appearance and editor. And here we can see various files that make up the website. These are all of the child theme files right here on the right. And we can see that I have both a style.css and a custom.css file. Now the custom.css file is our custom style sheet that we added by following the video in the previous step called how to safely customize your WordPress website using Genesis. So if you don't yet see the custom.css right here, then you want to make sure that you watch the other video and set up your custom style sheet. Once you have that, it should be displayed right here. I'm going to click on custom.css, and this is where we can start adding all of our customized styles that we're going to be adding to the home page. So the first one that I want to add is some customizations to the text-2 section. So to do that, I'm just going to add some code right here. Note that I have a pound or a hashtag right here, text dash two. Once again, this is the number that is being used in my website. Yours may have a different number, so you wanna make sure that you go through the Google Chrome Inspect Elements tool to find out what your section is. Mine is pound text dash two, then I have a space, an opening bracket, and I'm adding this background code right here. Of course, I have to actually add the word background to make this work. 
So it'll say background and there's a colon and a space. And this time I'm using the RGB code. So in previous examples, I've been using the hexadecimal color code, which is a hashtag or a pound symbol followed by six numbers. In this particular example, because I wanna be adding some opacity to this box, to this background, this time I'm gonna be using the RGB code. So you can check out your RGB codes by going to the Google, doing a search for RGB code, and you can see there's all kinds of different color charts that you can click on to find out what the three numbers are that make up the color that you want. So in this particular example, I've already done the work of finding those colors for this orange. So I'm going to be using these three numbers right here, followed by the opacity number, which in this particular example, I'm going to use 0.7. You can use 0.5 or 0 0.4, or 0.2 or 0.1. It really depends on how much opacity you want. In this example, I'm going to be using opacity of 0.7. So then I'm just going to finish it off with a semicolon and a closing bracket, and that will create the background effect behind the title on the home page in section one. So then I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to click on update file to update the file. Now there's one other thing actually that I do want to add to this particular box. I also want to add some padding around the words or the title and the box. So I'm going to add some padding right here as well. So for the padding, I'm going to do 20 pixels at the top, 20 pixels on the right hand side. I'm going to do 40 pixels on the bottom and 20 pixels on the left hand side. So these particular numbers, in order to remember how, you know, what goes with what, this is really a clockwise kind of movement. This is the first one at the top, right here. This is the top, this is the right hand side. Then just like a clock, this would be the bottom, and then this would be the left hand side. So it's kind of going in a clockwise motion like that. Once you've added the padding, then you can just come to the bottom and click on update file once again to update the file. Now when we check out the home page by going up to the top and clicking on visit site, now we see we have this orange background and now we can really a lot more easily read the title on top of the image. So that looks really great. Now the next part that I want to change is I want to change this white color. It looks pretty like it's a big contrast going from this kind of calm yellow and orange going to a bright white. So I want to change this white to an orange color as well. So once again, we need to use the Google Chrome Inspect Elements developer tool in order to find the code that's generating this white background. We also need to find what code is creating the black color for this title right here. Because instead, we want to have an orange background with a white color for the font so we can easily read it. So this time, in order to access the Google Chrome Inspect Elements tool, instead of going up to the top right-hand corner and clicking on these three lines, this time I'm just going to leave the cursor here on the white section on my Mac. I'm going to hold down the Control key, and then you can see there's this drop-down list, and one of the items is Inspect Elements. This is a much faster way to get to Inspect Elements than using the three lines here at the top. If you're on a PC, you can right click and then click on inspect elements, I believe, as well. When we do that, note that we go directly to the section that we want, so it's a lot easier. Here we see that the div class is home even, and this is what we want to change. On the right hand side, we see the styles, the CSS styles, and as we see here, it says dot home dash even, background color is white. So if I uncheck this box, it's still white because the background has been generally set to white. We see that down here, the media all, the selection is the color of white. But what we want to do is leave this checked and here in our sandbox, we can change the background color. So I'm just going to click on top of these three Fs right there. I'm going to add instead the orange color that I want. And now we see we have this really nice orange color in the background. And when I scroll down, that should be affecting all of the other sections as well. So with the exception of the footer section, we'll have to do that separately. But we see that this section has been changed and also the section at hand, this section, section two, has been changed as well. The next section I want to customize on the home page is the color of the title here in this section right here. So instead of being black on orange, I'd much prefer it to be white on orange. So once again, I'm going to pull up the Inspect Elements Developer tool by holding down the control key on my Mac and then clicking on the mouse. Then I'm going to click on Inspect Element to go directly to the code that is creating the styles for this particular title. 
On the left, we can see that HTML refers to the H4 tag, so that is specifically what we need to change. And on the right-hand side, we can see that it is also specifically related to the home-even widget. Because I don't want to change the home odd, because we can see when I scroll down, I actually like the white on the image right here, so that's fine. I just want to change the color of the black here in the home-even widget. So on the right hand side here are all the CSS styles and when I scroll down we can see here is the black color, the color is three zeros and here's the H4. Now the only key is that I don't want to change H4 throughout the entire website, I only want to change it related to home-even. So when I scroll down we can see the code here is dot home-even. That is the code that we need, so I'm going to highlight that and copy it. And also note that I want to change not only the color from black to white, but I want to change the font so that it's all uppercase instead of lowercase right here. And finally, I want to change the size. The current size looks to be 72 pixels. I'd like to reduce it a little bit, so I'm going to make a mental note of that. I've already highlighted and copied dot home dash even, and that's the main code that we need. So I'm going to close this all out and then I'm going to go back to my custom style sheet by clicking on dashboard. For the next step is I'm going to go down to appearance and editor and just as we did before I'm going to add the styles, the custom styles, to the custom.css style sheet. So when I click on custom.css we can see the other styles that we've recently added to the site, text-2 and .home-even. This time I'm going to paste the code that I just copied in the previous step which also happens to be dot home dash even but this time we need to add on top of this h4 because specifically we want to add custom styles for the h4 title in the home dash even section widget area so I've added dot home dash even space h4 then I'm going to give the opening bracket and then now we can add our CSS styles starting with the color so I'm going to add the color of this particular h4 title is going to be white which is pound and then six f's that represents white right there. Then I also want to change the font size from the 72 to a slightly smaller size, so I'll make it 64 pixels. Also, I want to change the letters to uppercase, so I'll add text transform styles right here. This is, this is the code, the CSS code, to create uppercase. So just add that right there and then finally I want to add some spacing in between the letters so that CSS code is called letter dash spacing and I'm going to add one pixel of space in between the letters and then finally I'm going to close it all off with a closing tag so it's a good idea just to not just copy everything that I'm writing right here but just kind of look at it and think about how you may want to customize this or change it yourself so we have the color of the font is going to be white, the font size is 64, text transform once again is the CSS code for uppercase or some kind of transforming the text. In this particular example here, I'm transforming it into uppercase. And finally, I'm adding some letter spacing of one pixel. Okay, so let's save this and see what it looks like on our home page. I'm just going to click on update file. Then I'm going to go back up to the website by clicking on visit site and let's check it out. So when I scroll down, that looks good. Now this is still black though, so I don't want this to be black. I want everything to be white. So I'm going to go back to the custom style sheet by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm going to go down to appearance and editor. I'm going to click on custom.css and I'm going to add a white color to the entire section. So here we see the dot home dash even background color is set to this orange code right here. But let's set the color of all the words to be across the board white in this entire section. So there we go. I'm just going to add the color of white, which once again are these six F's. Then I'm going to scroll down and click on update file. Also note, I want to change the words in the widget area. When I go up to the top and click on visit site, now the styles are set perfectly, but I don't want all these words right here. So really quickly, I'm just going to change and alter the words by going up to the widgets and just adjusting the title right there. So here on the widgets area, this is section number two, I'm going to open this up and instead I'm just going to put order organic foods from local farmers. Okay, then I'll just click on save 
And now we go back to the home page by clicking on visit site. Let's see if that's a little bit smaller. Okay, that's better because now it's on two lines instead of three. So that looks a little bit better. Now note that the shop button is still black, so we need to adjust that. So once again, I'm gonna open up inspect elements in my Google Chrome browser by hovering over this particular button, holding down my control key on my Mac and clicking my mouse. Then I'm gonna click on inspect elements to open up the code that is generating this black border on the right hand side. We can see it goes directly to the button and here we see it says dot home dash even a dot button and this is the code that we need to change. So I'm just gonna highlight all of this right here, highlight it and copy it. Then I'm gonna go back to my dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm gonna go down to appearance and editor. I'm gonna click on the custom style sheet once again, and I'm gonna paste the code that I just copied in the previous step. Then I'm gonna change the color from three zeros, which is black, to the six Fs. Okay, once the code has been added, I'm gonna scroll down, click on update file to update the file. And now we go back to the homepage by clicking on visit site. We can see when I scroll down, now this button is white with the white font as well. So that looks really good. So next when we scroll down, this section looks fine. But finally, we can see our table here is not looking so good because now I cannot read the colors here on this particular pricing table because it's white font on white. So we need to adjust this particular color and also I wanna reduce the size so it's not so large, it's a little bit large right there. Everything else looks fine and then finally we will also change the colors of these buttons from black to a brown color. So let's start by changing the size, I should say the size and the color of this title in the pricing table. So once again, I'm gonna open up the inspect elements in the Google Chrome browser. First, I'm just going to highlight this text. I know that there's text here, so I'm just gonna highlight it. Then holding down the control key on my Mac and clicking the mouse, then I'm gonna click on inspect elements to open up the code. Here at the top, we can see the CSS codes that are generating this white on white. We can see that here, the dot home dash even custom code we added to the H4 title tag is white. So we wanna keep that, but we just want to change specifically the pricing table H4. Now note that down below, the color has already been overwritten here, this black color. So let's go up one level higher here, and I'm gonna click on the one third first, and we can see here is the pricing table CSS code right here. So dot pricing dash table one third, I'm gonna grab that code right here all of this, and I'm going to attach to it the H4 tag. So let's see if I can just highlight all of this and copy it, and I'm gonna specifically change the H4 tag, which is this one right here, within the pricing table, within each third column. Each of these, one third, one third, and one third, each of these columns, we're gonna change the H4 title specifically in the pricing table. Okay, so I'm gonna close this, go back to the dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then go down to Appearance and Editor. Then I'm gonna click on custom.css and finally scrolling to the bottom, I'm gonna paste the code that I just copied in the previous step, closing it off with a closing tag right there. And I also need to add the H4 tag right here because I specifically, once again, wanna change the color of the H4 title specifically within the pricing table. So this is the CSS code that I'm going to use, dot pricing dash table space dot one dash third space h4 and then we have our opening bracket. Now I don't want to change the background color, I just want to change the font color. So the CSS code for that is color, simply color, and then I'm going to give it six Fs, which is the color for white, and I'm gonna click on update file to update the file. Actually, I shouldn't create a color of white on white because that is exactly what we wanted to change. So instead, I'm gonna give it orange on white, up above, right here, this is the D9411E, this is the code for orange, so I'm gonna substitute the white in this particular instance for orange, because I want the color to be orange of the title on a white background. Then I'll click on update file to update the file, and now we go back to the site by clicking on visit site and scrolling down. Now we should see, there we go, it looks good. It's a little bit too large, so we need to change the size, but the color is much better, now we can read it, so that's really great. We also need to change the color 
of the buttons and we'll come back to that in just a moment. So first let's change the size of this particular title going back to dashboard then appearance editor then clicking on custom.css scrolling to the bottom and here for the h4 and the pricing table I'm also going to change the font size to 30 pixels followed by a semicolon and then I'll click on update file. Once the file has been updated we can go back and check it out by clicking on visit site scrolling to the bottom and now here this is so much easier to read we have our words that looks so much better it's much smaller so the next thing is let's change the color of the button right here we want to make it a brown color so I'm going to hover over this click on the control key and then my mouse and then click on inspect elements. Here we can see the dot pricing dash table and then the link a dot button and then there's an opening bracket and here the background color is a solid black. So let's change that to a solid brown which is three F's. So that looks a lot better. That goes better with the orange so I'll leave it as that. Then I'm just going to highlight all of this and copy it and I'm going to hold on that to that for just a moment because the other thing that I noticed is that note that when you hover over this particular button it turns a kind of like reddish pink it's not really orange I'd rather have it match the rest of the site and be orange so let's do both of these codes in one fell swoop so once again I'm going to hover over this particular button click on the control key and click on inspect element to bring this up and now I'm also going to do one more thing I'm going to go up to this section which represents the button right here, this HTML. I'm going to hold down my control key one more time and click the mouse so that we have the force element state pop up right here. And here we see that there's all these different forced element states and the one that I want is the hover effect. So when I click on hover, here we can see the code for the pricing table with this hover extra word added to the CSS style right here and we can see it's this F0 color and it's sort of a pinkish red. So I'm going to change that to orange. I'm going to make a mental note that dot pricing dash table a dot button and then there's a colon and a hover. So we're going to do two changes to the code in one instance. So okay keeping this in mind I'm just going to close this out and go back to the dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm going to go down to appearance and editor then I'm going to click on custom.css, we're getting the hang of this, scroll to the bottom, paste the code that I copied in the previous step, which was simply pricing-table. Then I'm going to close it off with a closing bracket. And the background code, that looks good, we want it to be this brown color, which is 333. And the other thing is I want to add the hover color as well. So I'm just going to copy all this code and I'm going to drop it in one more time. So there's two instances right here, but keep in mind that in the previous example for the hover effect, there was also a colon and then it said hover. Okay, so for that particular background color, when you're hovering over the button, I want that to be orange. So I'm just gonna grab the orange color right here, highlight it and copy it, and I'm gonna paste it right here. I'll be sure to drop the code in the video so you can read it a little bit better. Now I'm just going to update the file by clicking on update file. Then I'm going to go back to my website by going up to the top and clicking on visit site. Okay, now when we scroll down to the pricing table, let's check it out. Okay, that looks so much better. And when we hover over this particular item, now it is a matching orange just like the rest of the site. So that looks really good. We can read everything really well now. Okay, so now, let's see, I didn't have anything here. Remember that this was just the text placeholder. If you do not want to have an image showing up here, you would simply remove the widget from the home section five. I have a placeholder text widget there with nothing in it. That's why this image is displaying. So I kind of like it like that. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. Now the another thing that we need to do is we need to change the color of the footer. It looks like it sort of matches but it really doesn't. This is an orange color right here and this once again is this kind of pinkish red color. So let's change the section right here from this pinkish red to orange. Going to hold down the control key on my Mac, click on inspect element. Then we can see here it is right here, the footer widgets with this background color. So I'm just going to copy all of this code, highlight it and copy it. 
Then I'm gonna go back to my dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm gonna go down to appearance and editor. And then I'm gonna click on custom.css, scroll to the bottom and paste the code that I just copied in the previous step, finishing it off with a closing bracket. Now the background color that I want is not this F0 color, but instead I want the matching orange color. So I'm going to copy that from the code right above it. Now I'm gonna paste the new color right on top of it right there and click on update file to update the file. Now we go back to the home site by clicking on visit site and now when I scroll to the bottom, now the footer section color matches the rest of the other sections right here. So the other thing that I wanna do, here we see that this top bar is black as is the bottom bar. At the bottom, this is black too. And I really wanna keep it consistent with the orange, the yellow, the white, and the brown. So I'm gonna make this background color right here brown. So I'm gonna click down, hold on the control key, click on my mouse, click on inspect elements. Then I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna find the title area. Actually, it's not really the title area. It's the site header section. Here we can see dot site dash header has a background color of black, which are these three zeros. I'm gonna highlight all of this, highlight it and copy it. Then I'm gonna go back to my dashboard by clicking on dashboard. Then I'm gonna scroll down to appearance and editor, click on custom.css, scroll to the bottom and paste the code I just copied in the previous step, finishing it with a closing bracket and also changing this background from three zeros to three threes. This way it will match the button color up above, which is also brown. Then I'm gonna click on update file to update the file. Now going back to the site by clicking on visit site, now we can see this is brown, it looks so much better. It really matches the, complements the orange and the yellow a lot more. Note that the color of this particular item right here is not the orange color that we want, so we wanna make sure this is consistent. So I'm gonna change the color when we hover over each of these items. I'm going to hold down the control key, click on the mouse, click on inspect elements, going a little bit faster now because we've gone over this so many times. Here we can see here is the color right here, this F0 number. Once again, I'm gonna copy all of this, highlight it all and copy all of it. Then, let's see, that looks good. Then I'm just going to close this, go back to the dashboard, scroll down to appearance and editor, go to custom.css, scroll to the bottom and paste the code that I just copied in the previous step. Once again, I'm going to change this color code, F0 color code, to the orange color right above. So I'll just highlight this D9 color and I will replace it right here by pasting it in, clicking on update file. Okay, now let's check it out by going up to the top, clicking on visit site. Okay, and now our code right here is orange, which matches the rest of the orange throughout the site. Let's scroll down to the very bottom here. We see this is still black, this bottom copyright section. So I'm gonna hold down the control key, click on the mouse, click on inspect element. And now we can see that this is the site footer section right here. I wanna change this to all threes to make that brown as well. That looks so much better. And then once again, I'm gonna highlight all of this code, highlight it and copy it. Close inspect elements, go back to the dashboard. Then I'm gonna go down to appearance and editor, click on my custom.css custom style sheet, scroll to the bottom and paste the code I just copied in the previous step, closing it off with a closing bracket. Then I'm gonna click on update file to update the file. Okay, so once a custom style sheet has been updated, now let's take a look at the website by going up to the top and clicking on visit site. We have just a few more details on the homepage to take care of. So here we are on the homepage. We can see all the customizations that we've made to our website so far. Everything looks really good. The one thing that I wanna point out is that when we hover over this button here on the second featured section area right here, this color is black, which once again, I wanna get rid of the black and I wanna have it be brown so that it matches the rest of the site. So we have just a few more customizations to do. Once again, I'm gonna open up Inspect Elements on my Mac by holding down the Control key, clicking on my mouse, and clicking on Inspect Element. Then, once Inspect Elements opens, we can see the code. Now, when you 
hover over this particular item right here on the left hand side, here's the HTML, when I hover over that and click on the control key once again, we'll have the force element state pop up and then we can force element the state to be the hover state right there. So I'm going to click on hover and then we'll see here is the code with the background color of black and that is the color we want to change to brown which is three threes. So I'm just going to add the threes in there and then we can see down below it's a little bit shaded right now but this is actually brown. Then I'm just going to highlight all of this right here, highlight it and copy it and then going back to my custom style sheet by clicking on dashboard going down to appearance and editor, then clicking on custom.css and scrolling to the very bottom, I'm gonna paste the code that I just copied in the previous step, making sure that I finish it off with a closing bracket. Then I'm gonna update the file by clicking on update file. And now when we go back to the home page by clicking on visit site, now when we scroll down and we hover over this button right here, we'll see that actually it's still black. Let me refresh my screen. Sometimes it takes a moment to refresh. There we go, now it is a brown color instead of black, which is really great. You can also change this to some other color if you'd like. I'm gonna keep it as brown so that it stands out. And then going down, everything else looks really good. So we are good to go. Now here at the bottom, we have some footer credits right here. So if you'd like to customize these, you can do so. I've created another video on my YouTube channel that shows you how to customize the footer credits down below. So I'm gonna refer you to that video. It's called How to Change the Footer Credits in Your Genesis Child Theme and WordPress. So I'll be sure to drop the link to this video down below so you can check it out and you can change the footer credits right here at the bottom. Okay, so now the other thing that I want to add to the website is a landing page. It's often helpful if you have a service or product that you want to call attention to and you want to inspire visitors to click on those calls to action. It's a good idea to have a landing page. So there's lots of different info out there on landing pages. I'm not going to go over all the things that make up a great landing page, but I will show you how to create one here. So looking at our finished site, I'm gonna be creating a landing page to collect email addresses for anyone who wants free recipes. So when I click on free recipes right here, we see that I have the title, an image, and then the three reasons why you should sign up for my free recipes, followed by an email opt-in form at the bottom. So let's go ahead and create the landing page now. So back on our website, I'm gonna click on dashboard to go to the dashboard and I'm gonna create a new page by either hovering over the top plus new and clicking on page or on the left hand side, I can hover over pages and click on add new. So I'm gonna click on add new right here to create a new page. Then at the top, I'm gonna to start by giving my new page a title. So I'm just going to paste in a title right there. Then here in the content section, I'm gonna add an image and then some content. So here we see that I'm on the text tab. Since I'm going to be pasting in some content from the demo site, the other demo site, I'm just going to make sure that I am on the text view, not on the visual view, because when you're on the text tab, that will remove any kind of formatting that is being brought over from wherever else you have copied the content. So I'm just going to paste in my content right there. Now when I go back to the visual view, we can see that it's a really clean set of content. There's no formatting going on here. And then I can go ahead and I can format the content directly within WordPress by highlighting the sections that I want to format. I want to bold that, so just highlight it and click on bold. I'll do the same thing for reason number two, highlight that and bold it, and then the last one, Reason number three, I'll highlight that and I will bold that as well. Also, I wanna add an image, so I'm gonna place the cursor where I want the image to be displayed and then I'm gonna click on Add Media to add new media. And the media that I want is not here, so I'm gonna upload something from my computer. So I'm gonna click on Upload Files and Select Files. Then I'm going to select the file by highlighting it and clicking on open and then WordPress will upload the file to my website. Once the file has been uploaded, we'll see the attachment details on the right hand side. As always, it's a good idea to add a title and an alternative text. So once you've added your title and alternative text, you can just scroll down and select the attachment display settings. So I want to have this aligned to the left, so I will keep it as left right there. I want to link this to nothing, so I'll just click on none, and the full size is rather large at 768 pixels wide. That's a little bit too large. Let's see, medium. Let's try that. We'll try medium, see how that looks. 
So the size that I'm uploading to the post, to the landing page is 225 pixels wide. Then I'm gonna click on insert into image to insert this into the image. And then I'm gonna scroll down and here on the right hand side where it says page attributes, I actually want to choose the landing template. So here it says template. I'm just going to click on landing. That will create the landing page that we need right there. And then once we set the landing template, we can scroll down and at the very bottom, we have already installed the magic action box. However, we have not yet set this up. So if you haven't yet installed the magic action box plugin, you'll need to do so by going to your plugins page by scrolling to the top, clicking on plugins and adding the new plugin called magic action box. Then I've created another video on my YouTube channel where you can Follow the steps, step by step, to see how you can set up the magic action box, which is the email opt-in form that you'll add to the bottom of your blog post, as well as to the bottom of the landing page to capture email leads. So I'll be sure to drop this video link in the video right here so you can check it out. Once you've gone through this entire video, then we can come back to our website right here, and then you'll just scroll down. To where it says magic action box, select the box you've created. In this instance, I've already created the landing page sign up box. Then I'm just going to scroll up to the top and click on update to update my post. Once a post has been published and updated, you can check it out by clicking on visit site. And here we'll see our landing page. So we've got our title, our image, and our content, the three different reasons you should sign up. And then at the bottom, we have our email opt-in form here where anyone can sign up for your email list to receive these recipes. Once we've added the landing page to our website, the next step is we need to add this page to the menu navigation bar in the top header. So when we go back to the home page, we can see that we don't have the landing page added here just yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and click on dashboard, or you can go directly to the menus by clicking on menus. So I'm gonna click on menus right here. Then I'm going to add the landing page to the menu. So here it is right here, get this week's top five seasonal recipes. It's rather a very long title, so I'm gonna adjust that in just a moment, but I'm gonna click on this. Then I'm gonna click on add to menu to add this to the menu. Then I'm going to open it up by clicking on this arrow right here. And instead of this long navigation label, I'm just going to call it free recipes. Once that's set, then I can save the menu by clicking on save menu. And if I want to reorganize where it is situated in the navigation area, I can just move it up or around or wherever I want it to be displayed. So I'll just add it actually right after the home button right there, the home link. I'll have the free recipes, the blog, and the contact page. And then I'll click on save menu once again to set the menu. Now when I go back to the home page by clicking on visit site, now we can see my landing page right here in the navigation area. So we're coming to the tail end of creating this website. The last thing that we need to do is we need to create the widget sections on the sidebar of our website. So for example, when I click on this button right here, at the moment for this website, I have the shop call to action going directly to the contact page. But in the next video, I'm gonna go over how to set up this website with WooCommerce. So we'll be using that shop button in a different way in the next video, so stay tuned. But for the moment, that shop call to action is going directly to the contact page. Here on the right-hand side, we see the primary sidebar widget area. And this is the section that we need to set up right now. So going back to the widget section by hovering over the website name, we can go directly to the widgets page by clicking on widgets. We can also arrive there by going to the dashboard, hovering over appearance and clicking on widgets. Here on the right hand side, we see the primary sidebar. So I just want to open that up and we need to add the simple social icons widget to the section as well as the search box. So scrolling down, we've already installed the simple social icons widget. You'll see it right here on the left hand side. If you have not yet installed it, then you want to go to plugins and add a new plugin and you want to add the simple social icons plugin. This obviously is already installed, so I'm just going to drag it to the primary sidebar at the top over here, drop it in there. Then I'm going to give it a title, connect on the web, and then we can add the different 
website URLs that we want to include for social network icons. Once you've added all the different URLs that you'd like to have displayed as social icons on this particular widget area, when we scroll up, we can also customize the color of the button. So I'm going to make these orange buttons so that they match the rest of the site. So here where it says background color, instead of this white color, I'm just going to make it orange. And I'll also make the background hover color to be orange as well. So I'm just going to drop that code in right there. Then at the bottom, I'm going to click on save to save my settings. Once the settings have been saved, we can close this by just coming up to the top here and clicking on this box to collapse it. And then finally, I want to add a search box so it's easy for anyone on the website to search for content throughout the site. So scrolling down, there should be a search widget right here, a search form, and I'm just going to drag that underneath the simple social icons right here. I'm just going to drop that in, and then I'll just click on save. If you'd like to give this a title, you can add a title as well. Once you've added a title, just click on save one more time and we're good to go. So now we go back to the site by clicking on site and we go to the contact page. And here on the contact page, we can see the contact form right there. And on the right hand side, we can see our widgets. Now it looks like the colors didn't really get set. I know that I saved them with that orange color, but we can see that instead they're white with a kind of red background. So let's take a quick look really quick at the settings for this and make sure that we adjust it to change the color. So I'm going to go back to the widget area by clicking on widget. Then I'm going to go to the primary sidebar on the right hand side, open it up, go directly to the simple social icons. And for some reason here we see the background color of orange for some reason wasn't changed. So let's try this one more time. I'm going to add in the color right there. It is a hexadecimal color code with a pound symbol followed by six numbers or symbols, letters. And then I'll also add background hover color to be the same as well. So let's see how this works. So I'm just going to scroll down now and I'm going to save it one more time. Click on save. Now when I go up to the top, it looks like, okay, now the colors we see, they're still there, so that's a good sign. Let's try it now. I'm going to go back to the site by clicking on visit site. Then I'm going to click on contact. And okay, now we can see we have our symbols right here, and that looks much better. So if you'd like to change this black color to the brown, you can do so in the simple social icon settings area where we just saw in the previous step. This looks good to me. So far, I'm just going to keep it as it is. We have our social network icons right here, our search box, and our contact form. So we are good to go. Now let's go back to the home page by clicking on the home page. And here we have our completed website using the Genesis Child theme called Parallax Pro. This is a responsive, mobile-friendly website, and it's been fully customized throughout this video. So I hope this video was helpful to all of you. If it was, please feel free to leave a comment below, like the video, and share this video with your friends. I will be coming out with more videos related to WordPress, Genesis, and how to build your business on the web. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Last but not least, all the conversation continues on my website at 77webstudio.com. So feel free to head on over to my website to continue the conversation. Until next time, I hope you have a great week and continue learning new skills that help you to build your business on the web.